Good morning, folks. We've got discoveries from here on Earth way out into deep space. We'll run through it quickly this morning because we've got a surprise for you this afternoon. Dr. Dunning's in town. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Pretty quiet once again. Over on the left side, we do see the active region coming back around. And in the opening sequence, you might have noticed a little pop there from that incoming active region. It was a filament that lifted up, broke out, and destabilized and released. Solar wind here. We are very calm and quiet in geospace. We should be having some more coronal hole streams, very patchy and moderate, impacting in the coming days. Geomagnetism is quiet. So yesterday we saw that it was indeed a stratospheric injection from that Russian volcano, but this is Papua New Guinea. That's two in just a couple of days, and you can really easily see how this one is not just your effusive eruption or explosion of an ash column, but it really does break up through the clouds and make it to the next level. Up next, lightning and gamma rays. Interestingly, we have known for more than 30 years that powerful lightning can produce gamma rays, but we are now discovering that a soft, weak gamma glow can occur from the clouds as it is charging up to throw that lightning bolt. The weak glow cuts off instantaneously at the moment of the bolt. Up next, we're going to TESS. TESS is discovering exoplanets at a crazy rate, but it just discovered three more around one star, and one of them is the smallest one it has ever seen. It is smaller than the Earth. These three planets are bathed in their sun's radiation. They all orbit very closely, none of which is in the habitable zone. Speaking of exoplanets, we've got Alma looking much, much further out and seeing the segmented debris disk into rings by the forming planets. And one way, way out there, this is one of the furthest out planets Alma is going to be able to capture. Last but not least, fast radio bursts. While they were able to nail down the location of the one repeater, they don't have much information on the second repeater, this marks the first time they've actually been able to pinpoint the location of a single shot fast radio burst. All of these stories are linked for you here. I'm going to go get ready to see August and do a little something for you guys later today. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.20 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open no fear. Be safe, everyone.